Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Amen. God is so good. Are you glad to be here this morning? Are you glad to be alive this morning? Amen. Come on, give the Lord another hand praise. Clap your hands like you mean it. Clap your hands like you love the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Amen. He's so good. He's so gracious, so kind, and so loving. I tell you what, I just appreciate God for all that he's done and all that he's doing. Amen. Amen. All that he's going to do. How many of you know that God is not done working? No, God is not done. He's always working. And as we established this morning, he always has a plan. He is God, so he doesn't do anything arbitrarily. God always has a plan, and God always has us in mind, and I thank God for that. I thank God for the man of God this morning, my husband, our pastor. Say amen for Pastor Blaine. Thank you, doll. You be so sweet at church. Like it that's the sight. <laughs> the Gospel of Saint John, fourteenth chapter, Gospel of Saint John. I I hear gratitude. I, I hear grateful. Uh, and I feel like I'm in the midst of some grateful people. Amen. Uh, I don't bemoan the fact of my circumstances or my existence, Edgar Jr., because the God that I serve has been good to me. All the days of my life, I live in a better house than I used to live in. As a matter of fact, for a long time, even married, we didn't own a house, we rented. But he was good then. Uh, Lady Deborah was talking to Christy about, uh, was we dating then? And I was like, dating? Is that what we were calling it? Uh, you didn't have no car, I didn't have no car. We were drinking cough syrup together and ripping and running up and down the road. and. Was that dating? But he was good then. When I look back, I know what you tell me, but I don't know like I know about what he done done for me. I'll take your word for it. But when I look back over my life, and I see where God, and let me straighten this up. God, all of it is not so much material thing. Amen. But when your mind yes. is messed up, yes. you might be riding in a brand new automobile. Uh, you might have, I'm going to go back to my age, a brand new fridge there. You can buy one. And they buying some mighty fancy one these days with all of us. I asked my Deborah, I said, we got to pay that much money for a refrigerator? <laughs> but you can't buy an appetite. You can buy a bed. But you can't buy no rest. But I want you to know that I slept all night last night. And when God saw fit, to wake me up. I woke up with a mind. Say it on Jesus. I woke up with a mind to get up and come out and to give him the praise. I didn't come out here today to talk about how that I wish that it was this way and that. But I came to tell the Lord, Lord, thank you. The old people used to say, thank you for a reasonable if you're old as me, it's, it's something on you that's hurting right now. <laughs> but I thank the Lord for a reasonable portion of strength yes. and help. I thank the Lord. Thank I often say, Kennedy, that I thank the Lord for this place. And I'm not, 
I can't talk about nobody. I thank the Lord for this place because I, I, I don't believe I'm going to hear no foolishness this morning. And I believe that I'm going to hear about the redemptive work of Christ. That Christ made a way from me that no matter how dark that it looks right now, no matter what the circumstances, no matter who don't like me, no matter how that they have dug ditches and put up barriers, that God has made, made a way, like my old pastor said, for little old me. And what he's going to do for me, Arthur, is not dependent upon my behavior. It's dependent upon will I believe God or will I believe myself? Whose side am I standing on? Uh, today, the Bible says that without faith, it's impossible to please him. Only only believe the grace has been accomplished before I ever got here God decided that he loved me have you lived long enough to know that you can't buy enough lunches turn enough cartwheels do enough stuff to make nobody love you if they love you they just love you you ever had anybody that you know that they shouldn't even fool with you no more. And they turn around and they say, I just love you. Well, when you did get some sense, can't nobody turn you again. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Let me talk to the folks over here. You see, David didn't have no perfect record. David had messed up real bad. He didn't mean no harm. Sometimes when you go to trying to cover your tracks, you get deeper and deeper and deeper. He started out with adultery, then he ended up in murder. And then he got uncovered by the prophet and said, you that man. But David had, this is his testimony, he said, this poor man cried. And he heard my cry. Then he said, long as I live, I'll trouble, I'll hasten to his throne and then he went one time and he said well the Lord gave him a, a, a choice Van Junior he said now you done messed up I told you don't number the people I told you don't doubt me because the Lord can say by many or by few I told you not to number your army but you did it anyway so you're going to have to suffer so now what I want to know is do you want me to deal with you or do you want to fall in the hands of the people David didn't have to think about it David said oh no 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 I know that I'm in you because you you are merciful, God. I know that as long as I'm in your hand, I'm going to be all right. I ain't going to like everything that go on. Yes, but I know that all things are going to work together for my good because the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And I know that a righteous man follows seven times, but he get back up again. I know you'll never leave me, not forsake me. John 14, John 14. I'm over in Romans. John this is so easy. Vanda Jr. said, easy breezy. Look what the Bible says, John 14. Jesus says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. We don't hardly hear this unless we go to funerals. Um, and then they misquoted, misinterpreted. In my father's house, uh, many mansion. I ain't got to die to go to heaven to get living no mansion. I, I, that, no, no, no. That's not even what he's talking about. In the temple, you have to realize that you're in on Old Testament ground over here. This is not talking to us, the believer, directly. He's talking to the nation of Israel. And in the temple were many rooms. He says, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. I go to prepare a place for you. You can't make a way for yourself. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. You know this mother nun, there's nothing about Vanda doing nothing. Everything is about God being God and me allowing him to be God. Okay, make it a little plainer, man. 
when I get frustrated with life because I can't make things happen like I want them to happen, and I beseech you, I'm like Paul was about the thorn that it was in his flesh. And God said, I got good news and bad news. Bad news is, is you're going to have to live with the thorn because the thorn got a purpose. I put the thorn there. The thorn is to bring you to the place that I have already ordained. Do you know that God already is so intelligent, Brother God, throw you throw that God does not have to wonder or think about, okay, now what we going to do now? That even before it, the foundation of the world, God has already ordained your end. God has he sees the beginning. He sees the end from the beginning. So your landing place has already been decided. Well why is it that life is so frustrating? Why is it that nobody hardly is okay? Everybody is all in uprest. Everybody making moves, trying to make things happen. I'll tell you, I'll tell you why. The reason is because man refuses to trust God. <laughs> so God has to basically, you see, sometimes uh, procedures are so invasive that they got to put you to sleep. Uh, no, 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 no. You need it. Uh, it needs to be done. Uh, but, but, but if you were aware, yeah, uh, you would do yourself more harm. Uh, and we're just trying to help you. But in order to help you, I got to put you to sleep. Uh, in order to help you, I've got to immobilize you. In order to help you, I've got to make it where you can't help yourself. I got to make it to see because we always want to help. And so God has to take away all our props. God has to take away all of our crutches. God has to take away all of our avenues for him to do what only he can do. And you know what happens, Yolanda? A person like that, when they come out, they come out with their hands up. Uh, you know, they tell the folks, you know, when you look, the jig is up. The house is surrounded. Ain't no more avenues for you. I don't care about what it was. You, you, you're not going to. And what we're telling you is don't come out now. Yeah, well, you better come out with your hands up. That person comes out with their hands up and they come out telling them, said, ain't no God but God. And it's only the Lord. You see, folk get. A person like that, people get tired of them because they just, you don't have to be nothing for them to go to talking about God. It don't have to be nothing for them to tell you, baby, if it had not been for the Lord, no, they, they don't want, they want to hear about what you did. But your testimony is, is that God, what I know, God taught me. God taught me how to raise my children. God taught Do you know that your children, raising your children is not over with when you're 18? Do, do you know that you still, until the day you die, you raising them little bad rascals? Uh -huh. Because you see, it ain't long before they get up and they know more than you know. And so, now, 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 and the first thing you want to do is, is you want to backhand one of them and, and take them the same way I brought you here, I'll take you away from here. And God has to teach you. Huh. God has to teach you how to raise them even at that point. And so he says right here, and he said, and with our goal, uh, and the way you know, Thomas saith unto him, I love the people in the Bible, how that they ask questions that I want to ask. <laughs> uh, I'm paying attention now. Uh, I used to just, you know, just skim over it and go past it and say, well, you know, that's Thomas. But you see, I, I, I have to look into this thing because the Bible says, I'm preaching right now. He said, the Bible says that study to show thyself approved. Uh, you, you know, you can do a whole lot of running and don't get nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you 60 years old and you still as ignorant as you was when you was 20 because you ain't paying attention to nothing. So, so, so he says, this is Thomas. This is the same Thomas that said that except I see the prince, the nail prince. Well, I know I saw them when they stuck the nails in the tendons of his wrist. I saw that. 
And I saw him when he slumped his head in his shoulder and he died. Uh, I know that he was dead. And now you're telling me that he's alive except I see for myself. Uh, Jesus told him, he said, blessed is he that believe and hath has not seen. He said, but you know what? God is so confident that he showed him. He said, not only did he show him, he said, thrust your hands in here. I want you to see that I ain't just painted in some kind of something right here. I want you to put your hand. Do you remember the day you put your hands in there? Do you remember the day when God showed you that he was? That's how come can't no black nationalists, no black Israelites or nothing come to you and tell you, talking about this is a white man religion. No, you can tell him, say, baby, I know that I know that I know. I know what God hath done for me. I know that before the Lord touched me, I know the state that I was in. So Thomas, this Thomas asked, Tom Thomas says, uh, uh, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can, how can we, <sighs> thank you, Lord, Boy, y'all know what I, I'm. I believe I'm gonna mess around and learn how to preach. <laughs> he says, uh, "How can we know the way?" It's a good time to take a subject. Look at your neighbor. Look him right there now, and tell him this right here. If they ain't gonna like it, but just tell them. Tell them, neighbor, one way home. <laughs> Yeah. Mm. Ain't, ain't, ain't but one way. I don't mess around and learn how to preach. Ain't but one way home. That'll preach, won't it? Ain't but one way home. You want to go around this way and you want to go that way. And, and you ask, ain't, ain't but one way home. He says, and how can we know? It's a difference between thinking something and knowing it. When you know something, that's when you become unshakable, unmovable, steadfast. That, that when you know something is when the enemy can't come in and sow tiles among. When you know something, yeah, it's when you're not like every, tossed by by every wind and doctrine. Well, you see, the Bible said that a double-minded man is unstable in all uh, of his ways. But when you know, and that, that's the reason Thomas, now now Thomas didn't really get to be known as Doubting Thomas till after the resurrection. Uh-huh. See, 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 you got some children in your house. If you got more than one, if you got two children, uh, they different at night and day. I don't care. You can feed them the same food, but 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 they, they, they're just different. And so you, you can't treat this one like you do that one. You know, we be, you like him more than you like me. No, it's not that. But I know I can say some things to you that, that'll build you up and the same thing that'll build you up or tear him down to the ground. He'll never get back up no more. And so see, Jesus knew them that he labored among his 12. And he knew that Thomas needed a little push. Uh, he knew that Thomas, Thomas, I'm going to have to let you put your hands in the nail print. But the moment that I let you see, uh, ain't going to be no holding you back, brother. Uh, because you know that you know. And Thomas asked him way back then. Yes, sir. How can we know? How, how can we know the way? The old saints used to sing a song. They would say, Lord, I want to go. Yeah. Show me the way. You, you, you ever want it to do better? Yeah, you, you ever want it to uh, uh, turn around? Yeah, yeah, you, you ever want it uh, uh, to be lifted up out of the same, same stuff? And you ask God, how long? Well, I come here this morning to tell you that the day that you ask him how long, you just right around the corner. You, you, you just right around the corner from your blessing. He waiting for you to get to this point. You see, uh, no man ever changes his behavior until it become too expensive. As long as you are right with it, everything is off. But God, the ego stirs the nest. All right. 
He got them little eaglets that's been in the nest for years. They've been in there for months, and he, the eagle go out and bring them back food, and as long as he bring back food, that's what we have to do our children. But they just open up their mouth for waiting on it to come, whatever. And you know what? You talking about some ungrateful. You 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 talking about some going to talk it out. I'm feeding you every day, and I got to hear more stuff from you than the folks I ain't doing nothing for. Until finally he get in all this good. I got you up now, strength now. You really could fly. You're just too lazy to do it. Huh? And what I'm going to have to do is, instead of bringing you meat and bringing you stuff you ought to be doing for yourself, I'm going to have to start bringing little pieces of glass and rocks and everything. What you're doing now, I'm making your, your conditions intolerable. Huh? Right? Because you'll never find the way as long as you think this is the way. Come on, preacher, preacher. Look at here. As long as you think man is your help. Huh? You gonna be steady running the man, kissing up the man, telling man how great he is and, and all that. But the day that God show you all right. that I'm God all by myself. Hmm. Make it a little plainer, Pastor. Uh, oh, when death visits. Uh, I ain't talking about when death visits my place. When death visits your place. Yes, sir. Maurice Hopkin told me this, God, he told me, he said, Vandal, he said, what's so hard about death? It's so permanent. Amen. You can jump up in the air, cry, snot, all you want to do. When you get through, ain't nothing changed. Ain't nothing changed. And so when I realize uh, that the Baptist deacon, when he took a knee, it was a whole lot of truth to what he was saying down there. Now, he might have just been just reciting something he heard somebody else say. But whoever it was, the first one that got down, they knew what they was talking about. And when he got down there and he said, it's the Lord. Yes, sir. 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 The Lord don't help me. You ever been there? Yes, sir. You ever been there? Christy. That's what I'm preparing for. Yes, I didn't come to church to look at you and see what you had on this morning. And you look real good. But I come to church this morning uh, to get fixed up. Because it's a storm. It's out on the ocean. And it's ahead of this way. And I want you to know something. Not only is God going to make it where you can stand the storm. Stand up a minute. Stand up. Give me that hand there. Not only is God going to make it where you can stand the storm, God going to bless you where you can pull somebody else. God going to make it where you can pull somebody else through the storm. He said, how can, how, how can we know the way? You see, when you get to the place when you quit looking for this, and you quit looking for that. You go somewhere and sit down and understand that only God ain't but one way home. Ain't but one way home. And how can we know? You see, the day I got saved, I remember asking God, standing there at that altar, I remember asking God, I said, God, I said, they said this is right, they said that's right, you got Hare Krishna, you got the uh, Nation of Islam, uh, you got the Baptist, the Methodist. How I know? Which one right? It was Easter morning, 1980. The Sunday school lesson was from sorrow to joy. And God showed me that he came down and he died on my behalf. Yes. Ain't but one way home. And believing in his death, burial, and resurrection transformed me. Now, I didn't know what I know today. All right, all right, take your time. I didn't know. Take I didn't have to know. But I placed my faith solely, exclusively, without reservation, in what he had done. All right. Thomas said, how can we know? 
Now, I had to come over here for my mind to be renewed. Because even after that, for 25 years, I'm trying to figure out how can I know I'm going to heaven? And so my mind had to be renewed where I would place my confidence solely in the work of the cross rather than in my performance or my behavior, trying to be like Jesus, trying to keep the law, trying not to do wrong, thinking that that was what was going to. And he had to bring me back to the place where I understood that my sanctification is, uh, is, is acquired the same way my salvation is. And that is by placing my faith in the work of the cross it's no longer me, but it's Christ, and I'm cru- able one way home. Yes, yes. That's reading Paul as the Galatians. Oh, you foolish. You see, let me tell you this right here. Because you get on the right road, don't mean you own the right road. You might have once been on the right road. <laughs> But because you got on it, don't mean you on the right road now. Uh, the way you got saved was you believed that what Jesus did on the cross acquired your salvation, reconciled you back unto the Father. That's the way home. But once you got in there, then religion told you that's good, but now you got to live right. Uh, now you can't, you can't wear them clothes that you used to wear. That dress too short. And the only reason they told you your dress was too short because their legs was too bad. <laughs> They had to have you to cover. Your legs was too pretty. So they had to cover it. They had to cover it up. He says, how can we know the way? The spirit, Paul, and that's the reason they kept us away from the teachings of Paul. Give me about three more minutes. They kept us away from the teachings of Paul. Because Paul says, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Paul always addresses the believer. Paul doesn't talk to the unbeliever. Paul always addresses the believer. Paul was the master builder who was given to explain, to perfect the body of Christ, to edify uh, the body of Christ. In order for you to operate in who you are, you got to I'll run up out of here. You got to know who you are. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. I ain't never had to follow none of y'all around. I, I I can tell uh, where you. I can tell uh, what your instructions are by your life. I can tell the instructions that you follow, and I can tell whether you follow in the mind of Christ or whether you follow in your your mind. He says here, "How can we know the way?" Because Thomas has become convinced that ain't but one way home. We've been following you, Jesus, and we know, uh, Philip has told us that we have uh, come, uh, I found him. This is the Messiah. This is the promised one right here. And now we've been following you, and now you're telling me that you're leaving. Uh, now, let me say this right here. Uh, to all you uh, used to be, want to be players. <laughs> Just keep looking forward. Uh, uh, probably the moment of realization that you wasn't the player you thought you was was whenever someone that you didn't know meant as much as they meant, they said, I'm gone. I uh, tore your heart out. You didn't know you cared like that. Because there is a tendency to believe that the way it is is the way it's always going to be. So when Jesus tells them, boys, it's been fun, but I didn't come here to stay. I'm going back to my father. I'm, I'm going, what? He said, but where I go? Hey, you know. the way. How do we know that? How can we know the way we, we thought, and that's what you was talking about today uh, when you said 
uh, in Paul talks about in 2 Corinthians, the uh, fifth chapter, he says, uh, we know no man after the flesh. Though we have known Christ after the flesh, henceforth know we are him no more. So in other words, we're not supposed to be uh, 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 concentrating on the miracles that Jesus did during his earthly ministry. Jesus has left his earthly ministry and he has ascended unto the Father. And Paul says that if we be uh, ascended with him, then we, our mind is supposed to be in heavenly places. He has a heavenly ministry and he has a heavenly apostle by the name of Paul, which is to instruct us in the way. If you don't know the way, <laughs> you can't walk that in. But now, a bad thing is when you know the way. And you won't walk there. In. And that's the reason the prophet said, make straight paths for your feet. He says, Jesus saith unto him, and I'm almost joking. He said, I am. I am the way. We're coming up on 20 years in February. Okay? I've done a good job. But the only reason I've done a good job is because I stayed out the way. I ain't come up with no harebrained ideas about what we need to do. No, 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 no. Able one way home. The only thing that's wrong with the so-called church and the body of Christ is is because we're trying to make another way. He said, I am. Let me tell you something. You can put it on autopilot. Now, I got a car now. You ain't even got to drive it. You can put it on, but I ain't, uh-uh. That's a car. If it was Jesus, maybe, but that's a car. All I got to do. And that's all that was wrong with us, mother. And you, you're not a troublemaker. You are not a rebel. You're not coming in. If you didn't want to be at the church, you wouldn't have been over there with them. You loved them, folks. You love them now. Yeah. But you know ain't but one way home. Amen. You, you can't take you can't take me there. No. No. Look here. I want to love my wife. I want my wife to feel like she is the most blessed, the happiest woman that ever lived. Amen. But I can't do it. Ain't but one way home. I got to follow Jesus. It's not that I if I got to walk away from you. Because how can two walk together except they be agreed? My vision is single. I know what I want. And the reason I know what I want is because I know what I don't want. He says here, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father. James says, the father of lights in which there is no variableness, a shadow of turning. Mm -hmm. The father got everything in his hand. Yeah. We sung that when I was going to Elaine Industrial School down there in Miss Hampton's class, second grade. Every day before class, we were saying, he got the whole world in his hand. Everybody was alive then, mom and dad, everybody. And we used to sing, we used to say, he's got me and you, brother. In his hand. We, we, we felt different about each other. We felt connected. We felt, we, we, we felt community. And he says, there's no way unto the Father except through me. If you had known me. Give me two minutes. I'm going to quit in two minutes. He said, you should have known. You should have known my Father also. Let me tell you something. You do not have to go to Dallas Theological Seminary in order to know God. You do not have to have a seminary degree in order to understand the scriptures. He said, if you had known, you should have known me as well. You see, because wherever it is the destination is, you are well acquainted with the road. Make that plain, Pastor. You know what brought you to where. Where I am now, 
And even, like I told y'all before, they, t they told me after things started progressing out here, they said, come on to us. We Come on back. We what, now You had misused me. You had done. You did what you were supposed to do. Because if you had not ridiculed me, set me aside, if you had not done that, then I would have been still trusting in you. I'm going to have to let this go. Just like, just like Joseph said. Joseph said, you know what? I hadn't forgot about the fact that I was just bringing y'all lunch. I hadn't forgot about the fact that I had nothing in my heart against you. I hadn't forgot about the fact that you got jealous because I told you what God was going to do in my life. It wasn't what I was going to do. It was what God was going to do. And I was sharing it with you because you ever been there? I thought that you would be happy for me. But instead of you being happy for me, it angered you. And you could not, the Bible says, they could no longer speak peaceably with him. They couldn't put up with, they could, your very presence. It's some of y'all that when you show up, you make somebody mad. Right? They, when, they, when they see what you're riding in, when they see what you're dressed in, and it they, they just, they just bothered them. I, I just told them, I said, if you're waiting for, for, for me, because uh, I'm, I'm going to try to get so sharp, I cut two or three of y'all when I walk by. Uh, you finna be miserable the rest of your life. They, Joseph said, I, I, I understand, and you threw me in a ditch. And, and Joseph said, I'm, fin I'm finna let y'all go. Joseph said, well, well, what hurt me so bad? Yeah was I wasn't but 17 years old. So you got to me before I got to the place where I could process. You see, I can handle it better now. But, but, but when you misused me, I was very tender. Uh, I was very impressionable. I, 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 thought, I thought I was safe in the house. The place that I thought I should be safe in uh, turned out to be the place I was hated in. But God said, now, I, I, I allowed that to happen to show you that no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. He said, I remember that. And I remember how that I stayed true to Potiphar and how that his wife lying on me uh, didn't make me turn against God. And I remember how that the same folks that I helped when I went to prison turned against me. They forgot about me. Folks I helped, they forgot about me, Brother Miller, when they got in. I remember that. I do. But when he got an opportunity to name his children Manasseh and Ephraim, somebody asked him, he said, well, why, why, what, what, what does Manasseh mean? He said, well, it, what, what it means is, he says that um, uh, the same people that, that mistreated me, he says, God have made me, God have made me to forget. You see, I'm going to let y'all go. There's something called trauma. Oh, yeah. Trauma is not the moment that the injury is inflicted. Come on, <laughs> trauma is what lasts All right. afterwards. So the enemy says, I can't take them out because God got a hedge around them. And so no matter what they go through, they're going to survive. So I can't take them out with the injury. So I'll kill them with the trauma. But look at you now. But look at you now. You see, Joseph stepped out the prison. And what's so good about it is, is that when he stepped out the prison, he stepped out the prison. Many times God can bring you out of a situation and you bring the situation with you. But when he stepped out of the prison and God made him the second in command, he said, I need to straighten the record up. Uh, I'm better. 
I ain't bitter. And then he said this right here. He said that you meant it for evil. But God meant it for good. Clap your hands for the Lord. Ain't but one way home. Ain't but one way home.